another installment of the 2021 Online Student Development Conference. I'm Marie Harker. I'm the chair of the Southern African Archaeological Student Council. With me today are two of my council members, Kalita Shadrach and Mpumi Moringa. And our very special guest for today is Bernard Kitoha. And I'm not going to steal Mpumi's thunder because she does the full introductions for today. She's been a busy lady thus far. Uh, so over to Mgumi. Okay. Mr. Bernard Flavian Kitoa is a content writer at Tanzania Heritage Initiative. That is the TAHI, which is a non-government organization dealing with protection, promotion, conservation, and development of Tanzanian heritage. He earned his degree in heritage management from the University of Dar es Salaam, UDSM in Tanzania. Bernard has attended two field schools from the University of Dar es Salaam and has worked as a, a field school teaching assistant in the Northern Bulu Plateau and Sumbawanga archaeological sites. He has also participated in, in, in an intensive course on the curation of inorganic and organic material at the National Museum and House of Culture in Tanzania. Today, he will be presenting uh, his presentation titled Resurrecting Totem Island Tanga in Tanzania. All right, you may start your presentation. Thank you, Mpumi, for such a wonderful introduction. I'm really overwhelmed. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Bernard Flavian Kitoa. I am a recent graduate from the University of Dar es Salaam. I graduated uh, on uh, December 2020. Uh, and from there, I've been, as introduced by Mpumi, I've been working on uh, an UNA government organization which is dealing with protection of uh, cultural and natural, uh, culture and natural heritage in Tanzania. Uh, it was established by, uh, by students uh, graduated uh, uh, together. We graduated together and uh, we had this idea of uh, establishing a non-government organization in order to increase the effort of uh, preserving different uh, uh, archaeological and heritage sites in Tanzania, which were uh, regarded as being whether in insignificant or forgotten. Uh, and today I will be presenting uh, a research ongoing project, which is titled uh, Resurrecting Totten Island in Tanga, Tanzania. And basically from the title one might, might ask him or herself that, what is Totten? Uh, where is Totten Island uh, located? What does it have which connect it with uh, the field of archaeology and heritage. And uh, basically, uh, why should it be resurrected? And uh, last but not least, one uh, might ask him or herself that, uh, what can we learn from this presentation which might positively impact the field of archaeology and heritage, uh, both on the region and uh, uh, the African general? So, what <clears throat> an island. Totten Island is a tiny uninhabited island. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Totten Island is a tiny uninhabited island uh, within Tanga Harbor. Well, Totten is a German word, Tottenistly, which means an island of the dead. It is dotted with overgrown relic of earlier Islamic settlement and uh, renovated during the late uh, 18th century. The island contained two the island contains ruins of two mosques. One of them is thought to be established in the 14th to 15th century, while the other, uh, the date is unknown. Totten Island is previously is, uh, previously Totenisilin, is situated off Tanga uh, in Tanzania within Tanga Bay, the coordinate can be seen. And this uh, here is the map of Tanzania uh, and this here is the Tanga region. And this red dotted here is represent the Totten Island, which can be seen like 
uh, from the Tango Bay, this is the Toten Island itself. It's not a very big island, it's a very small island, as you can see. <clears throat> uh, the first mosque, the first mosque, which uh, was thought to be established during the 14th, the 14th, 15th century, has a large east facing balcony and stairs leading to the roof, as well as well preserved ornament. It is also a cemetery uh, containing inscribed uh, Islamic tombs and Germany war graves. There are also many ceramic artifacts containing Islamic monochromes and uh, Chinese blue and white shirts, mostly from the uh, 15th, 16th, and the late 18th century, as well as the uh, uh, yeah, as well as the 18th century. We can also find household objects from the 15th to 18th century uh, on the Totten Islands site. Well, what do uh, what do we mean by the term resurrection? Uh, as far as the study study is concerned. Well, resurrection can be defined as recapturing the true phenomenal dimension of the historical experience of heritage with the purpose of bringing again into activity the value embodied in the forgotten ruins uh, uh, of Totten Island. Well, uh, I would like to take you through the statement, the problem of this study. A short discussion at Totten Island for architectural enthusiasm, meaning personal emotion, affiliation for the building and architecture, and the university knowledge on the values embedded with historical building brought my sight to the uh, understanding of forgotten heritage and uh, sparked my interest in studying uh, them, meaning the, build, uh, the forgotten ruins at Totten. Tanzania is well enriched. Uh, Tanzania is enriched with built heritage like most of the other African countries. But I have never uh, heard anyone mentioning the ruins of Toten Island and other architectural sites like uh, Songo Mnara, Kaole ruins, Kilwe Kisiwani, and Zanzibar Stone Town in all uh, three years of my study at the University of Dar es Salaam. Therefore, I took this as an opportunity to educate people about the site, especially on the material used, architectural history, and uh, makers and the building environment by resurrecting the forgotten heritage of Totten Island. Um, notwithstanding the effort made by UNESCO and the Tanzanian government on the protection of natural and cultural heritage, some of these sites have not uh, received such protection. The balance of conservation and development in these developing countries, including Tanzania, is generally difficult to maintain. This is due to this due some of the built heritage sites in Tanzania are overgrown by vegetation and are not legally maintained, perhaps due to lack of expert in the area, limited effort from the government's department and institution, as well as independent researchers, also limited con conservation attempt and visibility, uh, lack of awareness and accessibility factor of different uh, sites found in Tanzania. Uh, just to let you know that Totten Island is a tourist destination in Tanzania. And uh, as we have seen, it, it also has archaeological protection uh, for potential and that it has been used for uh, as a tourist attraction. The big question to ask is how many tourists are visiting and what is what are the impact to the Totten ruins? Despite Totten <coughs> Island being used for tourist destination, is not protected. <coughs> by the responsible institution, and it has not been archeologically studied. Therefore, this study aims at reviving or bringing into life the abandoned ruins of Totten Island for present and future use. Uh, the objective of the study, <clears throat> the main objective of the study, uh, of this study is to restore the forgotten heritage uh, in the Totten Island. The specific objective of this study will be uh, to examine the status of the ruin in Totten Island. Uh, also to explore the history of the ruin in Totten Island. We, uh, it will also examine any use of ruins of Totten Island by, uh, <coughs> by the local re residents. Uh, the study will also explore the use of open space at the ruins of Totten Island. And, uh, uh, last but not least, to propose measures of protecting the ruin of uh, Totten Island. Uh, the, research, the research question that will be guiding this uh, <clears throat> study, uh, one of them will be what 
is the conservation stat, uh, status of the ruin at Tottenham? Who inhabited the ruins for the first time? Oh, sorry. Uh, how old are the ruins of Tottenham Island? Are the ruins connected to the other ruins of the coastal Swahili? Because basically, uh, from this research question, is that uh, Toten Island is one of the part that makes one of the part of uh, the Swahili coast, which ran from uh, <clears throat> Mogadishu to Sofala uh, in Mozambique. Uh, but also, the, the, the other question will be why are the ruins not under uh, Tanzanian protection like other heritage uh, sites, for example? Uh, we have different cultural her uh, heritage sites like uh, Stone Town in Zanzibar. We have uh, Kilwa Kisuan in Songomnara, and other which are nationally known, like the Bagamoyo ruins and Kunduchi ruins. But also, the last question uh, will, which will guide this study is that is the site endangered? Uh, and if yes, what will what is to be done in order to rescue it from uh, uh, the age of disappearing? <clears throat> Well, uh, the re uh, literature review. Uh, the East, the East African coast between Mogadishu and Sofala, and the Como and uh, the Comoro and the Northern Madagascar has a number of Swahili stone towns bordering the Indian Ocean, embodying embodying the history of urban development. Sorry, all of these are both archaeological. Uh, some of this, some of this uh, East African coast towns in Tanzania include uh, Old Zanzibar Stone Town, Mjimkongwe, Ruins of Songomnara, Kaole, Kilwa Kivinje, and Kilwa Kisiwani. The area is scattered by <clears throat> monumental structures and historic buildings. <clears throat> All of these are both archaeological and a tourism destination and are preserved by the responsible institution. Although Toten Island is in use as a tourism destination, it has not received any archaeological investigation to understand the value, uh, the values that the protection needed, hence this study. The, method, the methodologies which uh, are going to, you, to be used in this study, uh, taking you through the research design. Uh, this study will employ both a descriptive meaning case study or correlational or observational study, uh, both of them combined. And uh, <clears throat> also it will employ qualitative and uh, quantitative approaches uh, in study of all, <clears throat> all data collection methods. Also the sampling procedures, uh, we, the, I mean, the study will employ non-probability sampling procedures uh, <clears throat> at all data collection methods since the area is no, uh, has not been much studied archaeologically. This approach will also be used for obtaining a sample of informant among the local authority leaders, elders, and uh, other local people. Well, data collection methods. Uh, all interview. A total of 50 people will be selected for interview, 40 being adults, 20 males and 20 females, uh, elders, and 10 youth, five being male and other five being females. And also observation will be another data collection method which will be employed on this study, and it will be a participatory uh, observation, <clears throat> observing the ruins and uh, the associated material as well as any other surface archaeological materials, status of the ruin and the nature of the area uh, which the Toten ruins are found. Archaeological survey will be employed, especially systematic and systematic survey, uh, which will try to cover a large area as possible to identify, locate, as well as collect samples of diagnostic archaeological material seen on the surface. <clears throat> also, excavation, uh, test pit excavation will be conducted on the basis of the potentiality of the area after observation uh, <clears throat> and survey, as well as uh, information obtained from remote sensing and uh, GIS, geographical information. Uh, <clears throat> what will be what the study will uh, the significance of the study? The study will contribute uh, new knowledge in the uh, in the archaeology and heritage site of Tanzania. Uh, 
by bringing into light what has not been uh, done in the island as it has been long forgotten, uh, especially from the late 1960s. It will also add uh, a new knowledge in the understanding of the coastal soil architecture site in Tanzania. As I have just mentioned earlier, that Totten Island make part of the coast of the Swahili coast, especially the Eastern African Swahili coast. So studying it will add new knowledge in the understanding of the coastal Swahili architecture site in Tanzania. Last but not least, this study uh, will increase the number of research sites for student academics as well as any uh, people interested in the archaeology of the coast. And uh, as it shown out there, these are my references and uh, <clears throat> thank you for listening. All right. Thank you so much for that oh, amazing presentation. Um, I'm going to start the question and answer session now. So I just want to ask uh, Mariette or Kalisa if they have any questions first, and then I'll ask my questions after them. Hey, I don't mind Go, oh, okay. going first. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, Bernard, do you plan on doing similar work in other, on other archaeological sites that have kind of been left by the, by the wayside, you know, endangered heritage sites that kind of haven't fallen out of the focus, out of research focus, out of heritage focus, and so on? Oh, oh well, yes, indeed. Uh, basically, I'm trying to deal uh, with different sites which are seen insignificant, but noting on the uh, UNESCO conference of uh, 1972, uh, any deterioration of any cultural and natural heritage means impoverishment to the heritage of all nations of the world. So regarding these uh, smalls, which are oh, the different archeological and heritage sites which fall on the courts of uh, uh, being insignificant or having uh, lower status. So I am uh, looking forward to expose this site, to bring them into light, uh, to expose it to different research, different researchers and people who might be interested in them uh, to study and bring uh, and recover the knowledge which might be uh, uh, in these different sites which attempt to be insignificant. Thank you. I think it's very valuable work that you're doing. Thank you. Commendable. Thanks. All right, uh, Kelisa, do you have any questions to ask? Um, I do, and for me, I hope I'm not stealing one of your questions. I do wanna ask, um, I might be, I do wanna ask, are there communities that closely identify with the Toten Islands? And how do the people closest to us um, feel about um, preserving and conserving it, as well as how do they identify with its history? Uh, as the title stated, it's kind of forgotten, and the people who uh, might be uh, supposed to inhabit the island, uh, according to reports, have uh, moved. They moved from the island to the uh, center, Tanga Center. But these uh, inhabitant of that island, local people, have not been clearly stated. They are not known. Mm. So one of the things like my study is going to deal is to identify this local community that in inhabited the, the, the island. And are there, just to add on to that, are there any oral stories um, within communities about the island? Because it sounds like a pretty amazing island. Like it sounds like there should be a movie about it. Um, I, I, I got lucky to study at the region Tanga for at least uh, two years on my secondary edu education. And uh, I never heard about anything until I reached into university and I got lucky to, did, uh, to do my BA in heritage management. And there I started creating picture because I had this excursion. Uh, we, were, uh, uh, we were visiting different historical buildings and we happened to visit Toten, but it was not on the picture. So mm. uh, I will look into that if there are stories that connected, uh, stories about the site. And uh, I think observation will help me in doing mm. what you've just said. That's amazing. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kalisa. OK, so my question is, um, because you mentioned that Token Island is a tourist attraction and 
um, you do say it gets visited by tourists and it is also deteriorating at that mostly by natural um, causes and stuff. So my thing was, um, do you think your research would help uh, shine a light and bring this to your, the government's attention and be like, actually, we can fix the site and generate some more tourist uh, revenue from the site? And also finding out more history from the site. Um, it would bring about who is, who are the inhabitants of that site, how it came about, and all that other history that's tied to it. Yeah, thank you, Bumi, for such a very uh, wonderful question. Uh, to to be honest, one of the of the sources that exposed me to the site was a tourist guidebook. Uh, despite despite uh, the site being, as I've just said, acknowledged by different tour companies in Tanzania, the uh, government has just turned a blind eye on the site. So me exposing the site will uh, uh, expose further opportunity. Uh, revealing, the, revealing, revealing to the government that if we invest in this site, uh, we could increase the number of tourists, but also we could uh, maintain the, the, the forgotten uh, uh, ruins at Toten. It might be the, it might be used by tourists, but they are leading to its destruction. But uh, exposing to the to the government uh, that we can invest and use it as a tourist destination, yes, and get money from it and uh, for the development and other things, but also at the same time, we can manage it because for now it's like tourists are coming in, it's not being protected. Uh, there are no guidelines to the ruins. So if we manage to do that and expose it to the world, we can achieve both. We can get money for the site in terms of tourism and we can also uh, conserve the site for future use. That's, that's great. All right. Um, just to build on a question that was asked as well, um, I think it was um, Mariette's question about um, if you would be willing to research more uh, sites that are deteriorating as well. Um, I think a good uh, way to do that would also to add the component of GIS to uh, just to create a map of all of the, the deteriorated um, sites that are, have some importance that could be uh, researched by many other students. And that would help you bring more into it, like also bringing elements, because you have the ethnographic uh, parts kind of get, you're getting there with that. You are speaking to people just to find out what they say. And also bringing in that component of GIS, it, it makes it a bit more improved and structured and it's strong and it will help you as well as others to get um, to get this, this the, the, these sites on the map and also to bring the conservation aspect as well uh, to the fall. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, adding on what you just said, uh, most of these sites are, are not protected because they are not documented. So doing this, uh, it will force the government, especially as you have just mentioned the issue of GIS, uh, will help in the mapping and the digital documentation of the site, exposing it into the government institution that this, although it might seem insignificant, but if we invest it in, in it, we could uh, achieve more than uh, it disappearing. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I like the fact that you are taking the initiative to do this and we're hoping to see more from you soon. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any other questions that wanted to be asked? No, I just wanted to say it sounds like a very cool project and one that's absolutely necessary. So I'm sure it'll be very successful. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully it will All inspire right. other people to, to follow suit. Get more people Definitely. involved. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically what the organization uh, I am working on uh, in is to increase awareness uh, to, especially in terms of uh, putting youth into the action, uh, telling them that there is a part of you in the conservation. This, if you consider them ruins, like uh, for all the people in that, no. And uh, thinking of that, the majority of uh, Tanzanian population are youth. So as an organization established by students from the University of Dar es Salaam, we aim at increasing awareness, especially in youth, uh, through different programs, for example, debate that uh, have content related to protection and conservation. We have different media tours, and we also do uh, produce different pamphlets 
to educate at these people. So we are not only showing the telling that them that we have one, two, and three. No, we want to connect them and assure them that you have a place in this and you can have a future in this, either as a career or as uh, just preserving what you have, what identifies you. So education is, is key. And I, I think to add to that is also don't forget about the value of public participation in archaeology. And yeah. when you get to rehabilitating sites and you know doing all of that work, archaeological work even, get get members of the public in to participate in these projects on a voluntary basis because the moment that people get involved in protecting their own heritage. You know, you get that buy-in from the public that is sometimes missing when we as archaeologists say, oh, this is a heritage site. No one is allowed here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is our, our knowledge instead of it being our knowledge. I think that's an important yeah, thing. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Bernard, for that fascinating talk. Uh, to the students tuning in today, remember, we keep on saying this, but it's important. Go and do the pop-up quiz that's associated with today's lecture and keep your eyes open for the rest of the content in the Student Development Conference. And once again, Bernard, thank you very much for joining us and everyone have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.